Hi, everyone. Today I'm going to read you this story called CT's Secrets. It's about a little girl named Mona who got to go visit her grandmother living in Palestine. They couldn't speak each other's language, so they made up their own. They learned about each other's words and they discovered each other's secrets. Then it was time for Mona to go back home, back to the other side of the earth. But even though there were millions of miles and millions of people between them, they remained true neighbors forever. Siti's Secret. This book is dedicated to the author's grandmother, who was still alive at 105 when this book was written, and to all the grandmothers everywhere who give our lives gravity and light. My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. When I have daylight, she has night. When our sky grows dark, the sun is peeking through her window and brushing the bright lemons on her lemon tree. I think about this when I'm going to sleep. Your turn, I say. Between us are many miles of land and water. Between us are fish and cities and buses and fields. It's a great swing, isn't it? love a swing in a tree and presidents and clotheslines and truck and stop signs and signs that say do not enter and grocery stores and benches and families and deserts and a million trees once i went to visit my grandmother my grandmother and i do not speak the same language we talked through my father as if he were a telephone because he spoke both of our languages and could translate what we said. I called her Siti, which means grandma in Arabic. And she called me Habibi, which means darling. I like that word, pretty. Her voice danced as high as the whistles of birds her voice giggled and whooshed like wind around corners. She had a thousand rivers in her voice. A few curls of dark hair peeked out of her scarf on one side, and a white curl peeked out on the other side. I wanted her to take off her scarf so I could see if her hair was striped. Soon we invented our own language together. Titi pointed at my stomach to ask if I was hungry. I pointed to the door to ask if she wanted to go outside. We walked the fields to watch the men picking lentils. We admired the sky with hums and claps. We crossed the road to buy milk from a family that kept one spotted cow. I called the cow Habibi and it winked at me. We thanked the cow with whistles and clicks for the fresh milk that we carried home in Siti's little teapot. Every day I played with my cousins, Fauzi, Sammy, Hanny, and Hedia from next door. We played marbles together in their courtyard their marbles were blue and green and spun through the dust like planets. We didn't need words to play marbles. My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. She eats cucumbers for breakfast with yogurt and bread. She bakes the big flat bread in a round old oven next to her house. Fire burns in the middle. She pats the dough between her hands and presses it out to bake on a flat, blank, black rock in the center of the oven. 
My father says she has been baking that bread for a hundred years. My grandmother and I sat under her lemon tree in the afternoon, drinking lemonade with mint in it. She liked me to pick bunches of mint for her. She liked to press her nose into the mint and sniff. Some days we stuffed little zucchini squash with rice for dinner. We sang Habibi Habibi as we stacked them in a pan. We cracked almonds and ate apricots called mishmish while we worked. One day, Siti took off her scarf and shook out her hair. She washed her hair in a tub right there under the sun. Her hair surprised me by being very long and it was striped. She said it got that way all by itself. I helped her brush it out while it dried. She braided it and pinned the braid up before putting the scarf on again. I felt as if I knew a secret. In the evening, we climbed the stairs to the roof of Siti's house to look at the sky, smell the air, and take down the laundry. My grandmother liked to unpin the laundry in the evening so she can watch the women of the village walking back and forth from the spring with jugs of water on their heads. She used to do that too. My father says the women don't really need to get water from the spring anymore, but they like to. It is something from the old days that they don't want to forget. On the day my father and I had to leave, everyone cried and cried. Even my father kept blowing his nose and walking outside. I cried hard when Siti held my head against her shoulder. My cousins gave me a sack of almonds to eat on the plane. Siti gave me a small purse she had made. She had stitched a picture of a lemon tree on the purse with a shiny thread. She popped the almonds into the purse and pulled the drawstring tight. Our plane flew to the other side of the world. I remember the tattoos on my grandmother's hand. They looked like birds flying away. My father says she's had those tattoos for a hundred years. I think about Siti's old green trunk in the corner of her room. It has a padlock on it and she wears the Kiana ribbon around her neck. She keeps my grandfather's rings in there and her gold thread and needles and pieces of folded up blue velvet from old dresses and two small leather books and a picture of my father before he came to the United States and a picture of my parents on their wedding day and a picture of me when I was a baby, smiling and very fat. Did I really look like that? When I got home, I wrote a letter to the President of the United States. Dear Mr. President, my grandmother on the other side of the world has a lemon tree that whispers secrets. She talks to it and gives it water from her own drinking glass. She guesses the branch where lemons will grow next. All the old men and women of her village take good care of their trees. Some have fig trees with shiny leaves. Some have almond trees covered with white blossoms that fall down on the road like snow. Last night when I watched the news on TV, I felt worried. If the people of the United States could meet Siti, they'd like her for sure. You'd like her too. My grandmother can read the stars and the moon and the clouds. She can read dreams and tea leaves in the bottom of a cup. She even said she could read good luck on my forehead. Mr. President, I wish you my good luck in your very hard job. 
I vote for peace. My grandmother votes with me. Sincerely, Mona. Does my grandmother know what will happen in the world? Does the world have a forehead? Sometimes I think the world is a huge body tumbling in space, all curled up like a child sleeping. People are far apart, but connected. My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. While I am dreaming, she rises from her fluffy bed and steps out her door to check the lemons growing on her tree. The first thing she does every day is say good morning to her lemons. All day, the leafy shadow of her tree will grow and change on her courtyard wall. She will move with its shade. When she sleeps, she will dream of me. The end. Well, I thought that was a beautiful story and I loved learning about Mona's grandmother who lived in Palestine because some of the traditions and experiences she had there are very different than the ones that Mona had growing up in the United States. Even though this book was written quite a while ago, the subject of peace is one that's been very difficult in that part of the world where Mona's grandmother grew up. And Mona, like most of us, just hopes for peace. So that's why she wrote the letter to the president. It was very brave of her. I hope you enjoyed that story and learning a little bit about Palestine. I enjoyed it and the pictures were really beautiful. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. I'll be back to read to you again soon. Bye for now.